15 months, your role as a parent is changing from purely responding to your baby's needs to teaching your toddler about new foods, new words, and even some new limits on what they can and can't do. At times, this can be frustrating for both of you, but it's also incredibly fun to see your child's development in progress. Learning new words. With my child, my wife did tell me at the time that I was at work that she said her first word of dada. Uh -huh. And I'm just like, and I missed that? How can I miss this? But as we progressed with it, it was amazing to see her grow and see her all the time listening. Like everything we said, she was just so in tune to it. She was just like looking at us. You might already be hearing things like up, no. And if your child says wah wah, and that always means water, that counts too. Your child understands much more than they can actually say. Can you clap? You want to continue to speak in full sentences and expand on the words your child already knows. Oh, you need some water? Oh. Okay. If your child is not saying a few words that you understand, is not making eye contact, or is not pointing as a way of communicating with you, make sure you discuss it with your doctor. Messy eaters. It is totally normal for your baby to continue to experiment with food. Maybe they're playing with the fork and spoon to practice their fine motor skills, or learning about cause and effect and what will happen when they throw things. This can be really frustrating for parents, but it's what babies do. Eating a toddler can be really, really messy. Uh, one of the things I do is, you know, I want them to have independence. So I give them, you know, one bite at a time, but I let them take ownership. So I put it on their little plate and then they feed themselves and it's a big deal. It's like science class for babies, but it's also okay for you to set limits around what's comfortable for you. Food costs money and it takes time and effort to prepare and clean it up. If you have concerns about how to pay for or get food for your family, talk to your provider today. They can help you find resources that can provide support. Setting limits. One of your most important responsibilities as a parent is to set reasonable limits that help your child understand what behavior is acceptable. Setting a limit means saying what your child can and cannot do. It requires that you stick with it and respond to that behavior the same way every time. Limits are meant to provide structure, not punishment. Children at this age are too young to consistently follow rules. So setting a limit doesn't mean that your toddler will follow it. At least not yet. I think the knee-jerk reaction is just sort of like a yelling, like, no, or, or yelling, don't do something. But it's, it's talking and explaining what's going on. So saying, we don't throw that. We only throw balls. Pencils aren't for throwing. With any rule or limit, you not only need to teach your child what the limit is, but also help them learn what behaviors they can use to follow the rule. At the dinner table, I try to, you know, ignore when they're throwing food or something like that and try to focus on the positive, like, Great job giving me your bowl when you were done. When you explain a limit to your child, start by acknowledging your child's feelings, then stating the limit, and finally, offering the behavior that they can do instead. If she's doing something, it doesn't mean she's trying to be disrespectful. Um, and that was, I, I think, part of our upbringing is, oh, you're not acting correctly right now, you're being disrespectful. Some of this might sound a little different from how you were raised. There is now clear-cut research revealing that yelling at and spanking your child do not change the child's behavior in the long run. Why? Because while these harsher strategies stop a behavior in the moment, they don't teach children what to do instead. Over time, it'll be less effective and make it so that you have to get louder or scarier to get them to listen. I actually feared my parents when I was growing up. Like, I was afraid of them. That fear was linked to the punishments that I used to receive. I don't want that experience with my daughter. Take a breath. As long as we're somewhere safe, then I kind of just like walk away and take the, a little moment or however long I need. You just gotta take a second. You gotta take a second. Deep breaths are huge because they, they see it. It's like, oh, well then I can do it too. When you get upset, your brain switches into fight or flight mode, which can lead to angry or emotional responses. Being a parent is so, exhausting and it's so much harder than I thought. I mean, sometimes I, I just have to take a deep breath and just remember that it's not their fault. 
When you take a deep breath, you actually trick your brain into switching from fight or flight to rest and relax. This is a far better state for calmly dealing with your toddler's emotions or any other challenges you might be facing. Safety, water. Drowning is the leading cause of death for kids aged one to four years. Anytime your child is in or around water, make sure they are wearing a U.S. Coast Guard approved flotation device, that you are within arm's reach, and that one adult is actively watching at all times. Pools, buckets, and bowls of water should be emptied as soon as they are not being used anymore. It's never safe to leave your baby alone in the bathtub or even in the bathroom while the tub is filling. Make sure you have everything you need before turning on the water. Swimming lessons for kids aged one to four can greatly reduce your child's chance of drowning. If you don't know how to swim, consider taking lessons alongside your child. Language. Use full sentences and lots of descriptive words when you talk with your child and ask them questions about what they're seeing, doing, and feeling. Eating. For toddlers, messy eating is about experimenting. Offer small portions to avoid big cleanups, wasted food, and stress. Behavior. Set simple limits and respond to behaviors the same way every time. Take a breath to avoid responding in anger. Safety. Water. Supervise your child in the bath or any time they're around water. We know you'll have questions about topics not covered in this video. There's no parent question that's off limits, so be sure to bring up any questions or concerns you have with your doctor. And while they're the expert on your children's health, you're the expert on your child. Together, you're a team focused on your child's health and happiness.